Hey everybody, welcome back to Investment Honey, where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'm not your financial advisor, do not provide financial investments, you know, and I don't even encourage you to invest, but what I'm going to do is share with you my own personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So with that said, we're looking at Royalty Diplomat Finance. It says here that RDF is a hyperdeflationary token on the BSC, integrating passive income, generating 7% BUSC reflections on each transaction, and providing P2E gaming platform. So we see some links up here in the navigation bar. We also get some buttons here for the white paper, utility paper, the audit, and the buy button. So they do have a pre-sale that's going to be coming up, so I'll take you over there. We can see this is going to go live in just over 12 days from now, and we see they also have some badges on their, on their page here. Seifu Audit and KYC, as far as the audit is concerned, they did pass with no higher medium severity issues. They are pink cell KYC. And we see that uh, this is basically the same you know, description that we saw on the main page with some additional information. You see 1% liquidity tax and 2% development tax, 1% auto burn, 1% will also go towards the jackpot reward, the utilities, RDF jackpot reward, the PDE gain that they mentioned on the main site or main page of the website. And then we see KYC, audit and save foo. All these badges are represented right here. And understand, you know, again, the badges do not indicate that the project is going to be successful. It's just, you know, more information to go ahead and keep in mind as you put together your own evaluation and assessment of the project itself. So we see that the teams led by Docs Dev, including CEO, COO, and a senior marketing advisor and software energy engineer, they aim for full transparency and full community-owned, and it's and for it to be a full community-owned project. So the ticker is going to be RDF. We see the max, the minimum is going to be 0.1. The max is going to be two. If you guys, you know, have seen, you know, any of my other videos, you know, typically when we talk about the max buy, when it comes to pre-sale contributions, I'd prefer it to be, you know, one B and B and below. But you know, again, each team is free to go ahead and set what they feel is, you know, fair for their community. You know, as far as you know, the buys, you know, when it comes to contributing, you know, to their, uh, to their sales, you know, the token. Now, um, we do see this is going to be a regular pre-sale, not a fair launch. You know, so we do have a hard cap here, 400 BNB. The soft cap is going to be 250. The initial market cap is going to be 191282, so not too terrible there. And we see liquidity lockup time is going to be 730 days after the pool ends. And then we've got 7%, I think, you know, of unlocked tokens. You know, as always, I do invite the teams, you know, to go ahead and respond if they come across the video to indicate exactly, you know, what is the purpose behind uh, the amount of tokens they have unlocked on the project. Now, looking at the documentation, we see what they've got going on here. And uh, let's see here. We've got token distribution that we want to take a look at. 30% going to burn, 40% to liquidity, 25% to pre-sale, 4% to private sale, and 1% to team tokens. And then, you know, obviously they've talked about the BUSD reflections. That's going to be 7%, which is pretty decent. You know, and then on the roadmap, you know, here's what we got in terms of the phases. Four phases. Stage one, and I don't know why this first, you know, capital here is not, you know, capitalized, you know, but these are things, you know, as I've mentioned, you know, or as I'm going to start to mention more and more, um, we're going to be starting a private consultation service, you know, on uh, through this, um, through the Investment Honey channel, where we identify things like this to make sure that, you know, hey, when the projects actually are seen by a number of different people, you don't have things like this showing up, you know, for reviewers to go ahead and highlight. So these are things that can be done through that private consultation, you know, so teams are interested in engaging, you know, with the channel. That should be a service that we'll be releasing uh, that can be seen from the front page, you know, uh, probably next month, you know, in November. So, but again, uh, moving forward with stage one here, we see work and plan on idea, website and social media creation, contract development, launch pack creation on pink sale. In stage two, we see the marketing push holding the private sale, obtaining the audit, KYC, and safety verification, which we did see that, you know, on pink sale, and then marketing on different platforms holding the pre-sale on pink sale. In stage three, we see the AMA with different communities, pancake swap launch, listing on, on crypto tracking platforms, you know, CMC, CGNomics, participation, you know, with influencers. And in stage four, we see RDF, PDE, platform launch, RDF, first game launch, obtaining a second audit through Certic, which would, you know, again, as we know, Certic is super expensive to get those, uh, those audits done, um, you know, but uh, that's what they want to go ahead and do. And then, uh, let's see, we see a second game launch and then create dedicated gaming server for RDF. So those are the things they've got going on in terms of the roadmap. I'm going to go ahead and provide you know, more uh, feedback in regards to the roadmap, you know, before we close out the video. But we'll head on over to the main page. So on the main page, you know, we've already covered the topmost part of the page. You know, they give you an introduction here. 
um, you know, Y section. So we get some information in regards to the jackpot royalty. So in financial terms, jackpots refer to large investment terms uh, reaped over a short period of time. Jackpots are actually, you know, every investor's dream because it's a sudden financial windfall, which I would agree, you know, from an investment. So in RDF, the jackpot wallet will accumulate all of the saved you know, amount saved and gives that amount to somebody, you know, one person who has the highest buying, you know, of the RDF tokens in 48 hours. Now, it'd be nice to see them do this to, for more than one person, but for right now, in its current iteration, they're just saying it's going to go to one person. So, I mean, consider that to be one very lucky person, um, especially if there's a lot of volume. Now, this is contingent, I believe, you know, on ter in terms of, you know, volume. You need people that are going to be constantly buying the token, I think, to really make this something worthwhile. Uh, the person who has the highest tokens, you know, will automatically get the first rank. And at that point, Jackpot Wallet will transfer all rewards and incentives to the highest buyer wallet. The highest buyer of RDF tokens will get rewarded by various incentives and benefits of the RDF team, entrusting the RDF model. So um, let's see here. <laughs> okay, and oh, the other thing I want to point out is that this only applies to um, purchasing, you know, of these RDF tokens in the first 48 hours. So. All right, moving forward, we see the advantages here. Reward-based ecosystem, you know, community-owned community project, liquidity locked for two years, and a decentralized PDE platform. And then we see on the token distribution, you know, so we've already covered this, you know, but on the tax side here, 7% BUSD reflections, 2% to development wallet, 1% to liquidity, 1% to burn, and 1% to the jackpot wallet. And then, you know, we've already gone ahead and taken a look at the roadmap, but you get these, you know, up and down buttons, you know, so to go to stage two, I believe you're gonna press down. And so, yeah, we see stage two, stage three, and stage four. So, and there aren't any other stages, you know. So, uh, what we need to see in regards to the roadmap, you know, like I've mentioned on so many other projects that we've covered on the channel, is we do need to see them indicating, you know, what's in process, pending, and ongoing. We need to see whether we're going to be getting anything, you know, at the end of stage four. Here, the last thing mentioned is creating a, a dedicated gaming server for RDF. Is there any additional, you know, development coming to the project? You know, is there going to be an extension on the roadmap? We don't get any of that information. And I think that would be helpful to see. And we also need phases, you know, to these, you know, uh, stages, you know, so what months actually constitute phase one, stage two, and stage three, and stage four. Um, by the time we do get to stage, you know, four, you know, um, where are we going to be? Are we still going to be in 2022 or are we going to be in 2023? So, you know, understanding that timelines matter, we do need to indicate, you know, that information you know, on the roadmap. Now, they do have two different, you know, versions of how this looks, you know, in between the main page and the, um, you know, and their, and their documentation. So I'd like to see some consistency between the two. Um, but we also need to understand that whatever information you know, according to my feedback that I'm leaving, that you may update, you know, on the main page in the roadmap. You need to also do that, you know, for the sake of consistency, you know, in the documentation as well. And we get their team, photo docs, you know, but, uh, and I think for this one, um, if I go back, I believe they did also have a KYC. Yes, so they, they give you, you know, names, titles, but you don't really get any other information. You got to go ahead and go through their LinkedIn links, you know, for anything else in regards to the team. And then we get a standard FAQ and partners, and that takes us through, you know, their uh, website here. So that's going to do it for me in regards to Royalty Diplomat Finance. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you know, guys, if you're interested in, in engaging with the project beyond the content that I have put together here you know, in this video, certainly see if there are any other content creators that are talking about the project. Engage with those videos, you know, put together as many details as you can in regards to the project, you know, so that you're, in, you're operating from an informed position uh, pertaining to any level of participation you may be considering um, with respect to this project. So uh, that's where I'm going to leave it, you know, on this uh, video. And uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel because you've learned something or because you've been able to benefit in some way through the content, you know, there certainly is a support the channel section in the description below. And uh, you can certainly engage with that, you know, if you'd like to make a contribution, you know, to the channel. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you all enjoy the day.